Barn owls are a really special bird in Ireland and for so long they've been enshrouded in mystery and tied to our mythology and folklore and it's pretty easy to tell the reasons why. When you look at them you see their dark soul piercing eyes and also the way they waft effortlessly almost in ghostly form around the countryside in the dead of night. It's almost otherworldly. As well, when you listen to the barn owl calls, they have very strange, eerie calls, and they don't at all sound like the classic twit-twoo that a lot of people would associate um, with, with, with owl calls. So the adults have quite a long, blood-curling screech. And this is largely responsible for the legend of the banshee. When you hear the sounds of the, the young as well, the calls of the young, if you don't know what's making those sounds, they can be quite freaky, quite eerie sounds. So they resemble wheezing or snoring sounds that can be quite loud um, at night time and pr probably a large part to play with tales and myths of haunted houses. Barnals are such an iconic species in Ireland as well and it's a strange situation because for quite a rare bird the vast majority of people have never actually seen a barn owl in the Irish countryside in the wild but yet pretty much everybody knows what they are. And a large part of their popularity owes to the fact that going back a few, a few generations ago, barn owls were the, one of the best means of controlling rodent populations. So from a farmer's point of view, they were very much seen as the farmer's friend and welcomed in to nest within farmyards just because of that, the beneficial role that they played in keeping rodent populations in check. And when you look at a barn owl, it's it's obvious just how finely adapted as a hunter, as a predator that they are. They have long legs with sharp talons that allows them to dive into the undergrowth to catch a small mammal prey. And to find their prey, they have almost completely silent flight, which means that they can hunt, um, fly around, hunt without giving the game away, without small mammals being able to, to, to hear them coming and also incredible hearing, which is their main hunting tool, which allows them to pinpoint the location of the small mammal prey, even if they can't see them, the minute rustlings in the undergrowth. So incredible, incredibly efficient hunters, and they obviously need to be to be able to fly around at night time in the darkness and be able to find and catch their prey. Because barn owls are predators, they sit at the top of the food chain and just by very nature of that fact, they play an essential role in the functioning ecosystem, in keeping species in check and also because they sit at the top of the food chain, they're sensitive to a whole range of processes that happen at the lower levels of the food chain. So we can learn an awful lot from barn owls about what's going on in the wider countryside and about the health of the environment and from that point of view, they're a very valuable species to study. So this is a, a classic barn owl building and you can tell just even from the outside just by looking at it there's a whole host of suitable nesting and roosting opportunities in there. And castles like this, they're obviously a really important part of our cultural heritage, but equally so our natural heritage. And as well as barn owls, there's also other birds um, using this building. Peregrine use it for roosting, kestrels for nesting, really important for bats as well. So built ruined stone structures like this, really important for a whole range of wildlife.
so this is this is a perfect barn on this site really you can see nicely tucked away pretty safe and nice and dry as well they've got plenty of space to move about start practicing with the wings but these guys are a little bit a little bit too young left yet so it looks like three anyway which is great to see so what we do for ringing is we just take them down from the nest just very briefly for about five or ten minutes to take some measurements and then we pop them safely back up in the nest and you can see it's still giving out to me though so these guys are about midway development you can see a lot of the fluffy down still on them but the, the proper feathers still still just starting to come through and we actually have four juniors tucked away at the back there so four is four barn owl chicks and an Irish nest is is good going are in a pretty pretty cool nest site so where they're actually nesting that small room it's actually called a uh, machicolation so that's a uh, uh, part of the old battlement so they used to use that for defense for actually um, throwing down things like uh, hot oil hot boiling water um, arrows trying to uh, keep would-be uh, would-be attackers away but these guys have obviously taken advantage and that's a classic case when when man has moved out, obviously they've moved out of this place a long, long time ago, but wildlife, wildlife moves in and thrives. So this guy's a long, a long way from the highly adapted predator that that will become in, uh, in 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 a couple of months' time. So it's just still quite quite a way to go in terms of development. All this fluffy down it needs to lose and properly develop its uh, its flight feathers. Um, so it's still going to be in the nest for another another four or five weeks. So quite a quite a long breeding season. Pop them on the lap. This is the ring that we put around the leg, and each ring is a special, a special code, special um, sequence of numbers and letters. So that means that if we come across them again, we know their story. We know that the, this bird is from this site. We know how old it is, how far it's travelled, and it gives a really good picture of survival as well. So even just from this site alone, we've built up really good information in terms of the birds that have been through this site. And we always make sure that we do this at the right time of year and that at the right stage of development so that once these guys are, are this old the female would move out of the nest so she wouldn't be in there anymore during the day so this isn't disturbing the adults at all Unfortunately barn owl populations have struggled over recent decades and they've become an increasingly rare sight in certain parts of the country as they're a farmland bird, similar to a lot of other species dependent on farmland, a lot of their the population changes are the result of changes in farming practices, intensification of agriculture, and from a barn owl's perspective this has meant a dwindling of, of, of resources in terms of foraging habitats, in terms of nest sites, which has affected their populations and caused quite a dramatic population decline over the past 30 or 40 years. Using specialised GPS data loggers, we've been able to get an insight into barn owl foraging behaviour, basically what they do when they're out and about moving around the countryside at night time, and particularly what habitats they're selecting for hunting. And it's amazing to see just how important certain features of the landscape are, such as good hedgerows, also areas of rough grassland, grassy margins, and areas like wild bird cover and equally just how they effectively ignore more intensive agricultural areas such as pastures. So we can really see just how important it is that, and the value of setting aside areas or creating habitats for wildlife. In, in more recent times, one of the main causes of concern is also the increased use of rat poisons or rodenticides and problems can occur here because these uh, toxins are persistent in the food chain. So when small mammals can become contaminated by these poisons, they remain in the systems of the small mammals, which are obviously then taken by barn owls, and the toxins can build up and accumulate in the food chain and can accumulate at the top of the food chain, where obviously where barn owls sit.
So by being more aware of the risks posed by our dentistite juice to wildlife and by taking some small and simple steps to change the way that we control rodents, we can help to reduce the risk of exposure to barn owls and to other wildlife. Barn owls are such an important part of our countryside and we should strive to ensure that this remains the case and that their eerie screams are still heard throughout the countryside in the dead of night. <laughs>